Astrolight, and it's titled Why Bitcoin? The Series by Tomer Strolight. Welcome to Why Bitcoin. Each chapter in this series is short, only two to four minutes at most to read, entirely accessible to newcomers to Bitcoin, offers some new perspective to even the most experienced Bitcoiners. Bitcoin is a vast subject with countless facets, angles, and perspectives. It can be looked at, thought about, and appreciated in many ways. By writing very short pieces, I hope to take a single snapshot of Bitcoin from a very different perspective with each one, so that the reader may, upon finishing, better understand the whole. I hope you find these chapters helpful, informative, enjoyable, and enlightening. Chapter 1 why choose Bitcoin? Bitcoin is money you need to choose. So why should you? Why choose Bitcoin? Why choose it as money? The answer to this question lies in the fact that you can even ask it. Let us recall, you are not asked to choose the dollar or the euro, the pound, etc. You are born into a world where the dollar is money and where the law says you must accept it as money and everyone around you accepts it as money. And so you take for granted that it is money. But if you look closely, you'll see that the dollar isn't particularly fair money, or very good money, or very hard money. On the other hand, nobody has forced you, or anyone else for that matter, to use Bitcoin. No one ever will. No law has been passed dictating that you or anyone else must accept Bitcoin. So why should you start to think of it as money? There are long lists of Bitcoin's features that people give for why it is better than the dollar and gold as well. But more important than any one feature is that Bitcoin asks you to use it instead of forcing you to. You do not have to accept Bitcoin, but you can if you choose to. And Bitcoin plans to work hard to get you to do this. To be your money, Bitcoin needs to earn your confidence as well as that of hundreds of millions of other people. Think of what must be true for it to become accepted by a hundred million people and then a billion of them when each and every one of them must actually choose it. Moreover, to stay as money, it must remain the best choice so that nothing better can come along and take its place. These two reasons, the need to earn your choice and keep on earning it, is what forces Bitcoin to become the best money in the world. Although there are lots of ways to describe Bitcoin, one fundamental way is to say that Bitcoin is a process of becoming and remaining the very best freely chosen money the world has ever and will ever see according to those who choose it. Really, how could the dollar, which commands you to use it, or gold, which cannot improve, compete with this? Neither can earn your choice. Whatever it is that people need from money, Bitcoin is the only entity in the world that will improve and adapt to best suit those needs. Interestingly, it turns out that one capability people value in Bitcoin is just how darn hard it is to change, how slow it is to change, and how meticulously detailed every aspect of every change is. That's actually a feature called incorruptibility. So why choose Bitcoin? Because the very fact that Bitcoin needs you to choose it means that it must be worthy of your choice, which forces it to continuously be better money than any alternative. This creates a self-reinforcing cycle where it just keeps getting better and getting more people to choose it. And more people choosing it itself makes Bitcoin better money, which in turn gets more people to choose it, which makes it better, and so on. Chapter 2. Why Bitcoin's Rules Are Enforced by Physics a powerful analogy to explain why using nature's rules over man-made rules makes Bitcoin better money. The 
German autobahn highways have no legally enforced speed limit. The laws of physics are the only limitations as to how fast automobiles can travel there. As such, Germans have figured out how to make very fast cars. Fast small cars, fast family cars, fast SUVs, fast trucks, etc. And also, safe fast cars, because nobody wants to die getting somewhere fast. The lack of legally enforced constraints is what makes German cars faster, safer, and better than those engineered in countries where speed limits and safety standards are prescribed by government edict. This same reasoning is remarkably why Bitcoin is the best money the world will ever see. No government tells Bitcoin what rules apply or how to enforce them, nor can one. The mechanisms that Bitcoin relies on to enforce its rules are the laws of physics. They are eternal, unchanging rules. They are not rules made up on a whim and changed from time to time by some individual or committee claiming to be pursuing some virtuous goal while in reality trying to enrich itself. Like the safety and speed goals of German cars, Bitcoin has safety and speed goals too. Safety-wise, Bitcoin gives you the monetary equivalent of safety by allowing you to store your Bitcoins where only you can find them. It does this using astronomically large random numbers as the storage location. The laws of physics dictate that nobody can guess your number, even if they turn the whole planet into a giant computer making endless guesses. Speed-wise, Bitcoin doesn't try to go fast, though. Instead, it seeks to maintain a constant speed or pace. That steady pace Bitcoin is after is that one block will be added to the blockchain on average every 10 minutes forever. And it enforces this goal, too, with the eternal, unchanging laws of physics. Even if we turned all the world's energy towards trying to speed this up, Bitcoin would slam the brakes on within 2016 blocks at most. And if we tried to slow it down, Bitcoin would step on the gas and speed it up in the same number of blocks. And no government law can change this. This average speed target relies on a clever combination of something called a proof of work, which is based on physical work in the real world, i.e. the laws of physics, and a little piece of computer code called the difficulty adjustment, which is how Bitcoin maintains its average pace of block discovery. Nobody and nothing can violate these mechanisms. No lawmaker, no hacker, no protester, no banker, no government, no corporation, no army. Nothing. It is as raw and real as reality itself. So if you appreciate that you can rely on the laws of physics instead of the whims of bureaucrats and politicians to protect your savings, Bitcoin is the choice for you. By relying on the eternal and consistent laws of physics, Bitcoin guarantees perfect reliability that nobody can break its promises. That frees it from any reliance on temporary institutions like central banks, political parties, and even nation states. Bitcoin is forever. Chapter 3 Why Bitcoin's Buying Power Keeps Rising Yes, the value of Bitcoin will continue to rise, and you haven't missed the boat. Find out why. You work, you get paid. You trade your pay for the work that other people do. Here's a question for you. Over time, does the money you get paid with buy more of the work other people do, or does it buy less? If you hold your country's money, you know the answer. Inflation reduces what your money can buy. This is because the money supply is growing faster than the amount of work that's being done. So more money buys less work. If you hold precious metals instead, the theory is that the purchasing power holds steady because producing that metal requires work that's steady over time. But if you hold Bitcoin, that purchasing power just keeps going up a lot. Why is this? 
Imagine if everything about the current process of making money was flipped upside down. Imagine a system that made it impossible to print more and more money out of thin air. What if, instead of it being easy to create money, the system required that more and more work had to be put in to creating it? What if no matter how much work was put in, only a certain predetermined amount could be created in a given time period? What if that amount kept shrinking? Surely then, by reversing the original process of easily creating any amount over any time, the money's purchasing power would grow instead of shrink. This, my friends, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin takes inflation and flips it on its head. When you accept Bitcoin, you sign on to the opposite process of the one that causes money to lose purchasing power over time. Bitcoin's buying power over time is therefore the flip side of inflation. Flip the inflation coin over and on the opposite side is Bitcoin. However, Bitcoin is not a coin you toss. Bitcoin is a coin you choose. Choose Bitcoin and you'll never suffer from inflation again. Instead, you'll benefit from its opposite. Chapter 4 why you don't need permission to use Bitcoin. Imagine what would happen to you if someone could take away your permission to use money and did. Bitcoin is really for everyone. Nobody has to be approved to use it. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. Not now, not ever. Bitcoin doesn't even want to know your name. It can't. It also doesn't want to know your gender, your age, your income, your race, your politics, your driving record, your debts, your assets, your kinks, or any single thing at all about you. Have you got a large random number? Good. You can use Bitcoin. Hint, if you're reading this on a computer or phone, you can generate such a number. Got some Bitcoin you want to send to somebody else? Bitcoin doesn't care who they are either. Nobody is in charge of Bitcoin, so you don't need anyone's permission to use it. Why is Bitcoin like this? Because it is built to avoid having to trust any permission-granting institution and to outlast it too. Bitcoin is forever, wherever, for everyone. So if you're in Zimbabwe now, you can use it. If you're living in Antarctica in 200 years, that's fine. You see, countries will come and go. Companies will come and go. Rulers will come and go, but Bitcoin will still be here, operating independent of whether any particular countries, companies, and rulers exist. How does Bitcoin avoid its users having to get permission to use it? Remarkably, by not building users into its system at all. Bitcoin only knows that Bitcoins exist at numbers known as public keys, or more commonly, addresses derived from these public keys. And anyone can generate a public key and the associated top-secret private key that goes along with it. In fact, you can go ahead and generate millions of these private public key pairs, and Bitcoin wouldn't have a clue if you were one person or a million people. I mean, it really doesn't even know or care that people exist. All Bitcoin cares about is that if you want to send some Bitcoin from one address to another, you can produce the computer-generated proof that you have the private key associated with where those Bitcoins are stored. That's it. It doesn't want to know who you are, what you're buying, why you're sending the coins, where the recipient is, or anything else for that matter. Now, this idea may initially bother you a little bit. Doesn't that mean criminals can use Bitcoin? Well, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but criminals can use other forms of money too. In fact, criminals have existed since long before Bitcoin was released in the year 2009. Moreover, in many places in the world, the real criminals are the tyrants in charge who label innocent civilians as criminals. So Bitcoin isn't taking any sides here. It doesn't even know people exist. So it sure as heck doesn't know that people have ideas 
like crimes. It just has this rule that you can spend bitcoins if you know the right private key. And this rule will never change because it is rooted in the laws of nature. That's why Bitcoin is money for anyone, anywhere, anytime, everywhere and forever. Bitcoin is open to all races, all ages, all genders, all income ranges, all backgrounds and all beliefs. No systemic prejudice towards anyone ever. By the way, that means a lot of people will choose to use Bitcoin. And the more that choose to use it, the more valuable it will become. Chapter 5. Why Bitcoin is the New Frontier If you love and welcome adventure, danger, and exploration, consider moving to Bitcoin. Once it was the New World that represented the frontier. After, when the Americas became settled, we believed that space was the next and famously final frontier. But we have now an altogether new frontier to turn our attention to, and it is called Bitcoin. For those with the curiosity to look, Bitcoin has emerged as a vast and mysterious space to explore with treasures, dangers, and untold potential. And similar to the Statue of Liberty's beautiful but no longer true invitation, Bitcoin beckons to those who are tired, poor, and yearning to breathe free, to enter its realm and bask in the light of its gifts. The Bitcoin frontier exists atop the entirety of the earth and human civilization. It is accessible to practically anyone, anywhere. It beckons and rewards its explorers to discover new sources of energy. It encourages them to focus on long time horizons. It liberates them from arbitrary decrees of soul-sucking bureaucracies and institutions. Like any new frontier, though, the going is not easy. The exploration and development involve hard work, difficult challenges, extreme patience, and even danger to life and limb. But the reward promises a reclamation and even discovery of new freedoms essential for human thriving. Such freedoms are now disappearing from the world. Yet to those who choose Bitcoin, they are well worth the effort and the risk required to recapture them and rebuild them in an indestructible manner. So we go forth into this new frontier, bravely, curiously, openly and transparently and invite the world to watch us and join us. Bitcoin is truly a place that gets better with time and effort, and it is open for everyone to come to whenever they are ready. Chapter 6 Why it takes both time and energy to make Bitcoins Since it takes your time and your energy to earn money honestly, and Bitcoin is honest money, it takes time and energy to make Bitcoins. To earn money, you have to put in time and work. So for the sake of fairness, it should also be the case that the creation of money itself takes time and work. But this is not the case with national currencies. Any arbitrary amount of dollars, euros, pesos, pounds, etc. can be conjured out of thin air instantly and with no work. The creation of this kind of money is therefore not tied to time and work. And so this method of the creation of money discourages people from working. It instead encourages people to seek handouts of this easy money. This isn't just welfare for the poor. It is mostly huge handouts for the very rich. Bitcoin fixes this. Creating Bitcoins requires time. Bitcoin, the system, guarantees that bitcoins, its unit of currency, can only be created over a preset schedule of time. A small amount of bitcoin is created every 10 minutes on average, with that amount getting cut in half every four years, leading to a maximum supply of 21 million bitcoins ever. And creating bitcoins also requires work. Nobody can conjure bitcoins without proving that they worked to create them. 
The creation of bitcoins is a giant competition between workers all over the world to win each reward that is won every 10 minutes on average. The more competitors and the more work they do, the harder it gets to win. So if you put in your time and your energy to earn money, wouldn't you want to choose a money that also requires the people who create it to have to put in their time and energy too? That money is Bitcoin, and it is the only money in the world now that gives fair treatment to people who put in their time and energy to earn money. Chapter 7 why Bitcoin's energy use is not environmentally harmful. You may have heard a criticism that Bitcoin uses lots of energy and that this is bad for the environment. This criticism is flawed. Please consider this rebuttal in three short parts. Part one, not all energy use is harmful to the environment. First, let us address a flawed presumption that all energy use is harmful to the environment. There are many forms of clean energy produced by nuclear and hydro mostly, but also increasingly wind and solar that are far cheaper than energy created by fossil fuel. The part of Bitcoin that uses electricity, mining, is an intensely competitive business and by necessity uses the cheapest sources of energy available. A quick internet search will reveal that the cheapest sources of electricity come from clean energy. I leave this task to you to avoid being accused of cherry-picking one study over others making this claim. In fact, fossil fuel energy is far more expensive per megawatt than clean energy sources, and it is thus overwhelmingly used only in cases where energy needs to either be portable, which is not relevant to Bitcoin mining, but highly relevant in transportation, or uninterrupted to supplement the fact that solar and wind are intermittent sources of energy since the nighttime and clouds obscure the sun and the wind doesn't always blow. Given the incentive to use the cheapest energy, Bitcoin mining migrates towards clean energy since clean energy is the cheapest source of electricity. Part two, Bitcoin is a very good use of energy. Let me begin the second point by acknowledging that Bitcoin does use lots of energy. Why this is a good thing is explained in this short article, link included. Bitcoin is transparent and honest about how much energy it uses, so this makes it an easy target to criticize. However, Bitcoin is sound money, better than our current system of money, and that is a very valuable thing for a civilization to have. It is arguably a far more worthwhile expenditure of energy than many other large uses of energy, such as sources of entertainment like social media or personal overconsumption like unhealthy processed food. Further, consider the energy used in military operations, the current banking system, and many other things we'd be better off with less of in our lives. Because Bitcoin increases in value over time, it incentivizes more saving and reduced spending. Bitcoin stands to correct unnecessary consumption, which includes significant energy misuse and waste. This leads me to the conclusion that it will almost certainly be a net benefit to the environment. Part 3. Bitcoin incentivizes the development of abundant clean energy. Thirdly and finally, I'd like to point out that Bitcoin mining actually encourages the development of ever cheaper energy sources. This is a forward-looking point. Bitcoin's energy use actually incentivizes the invention of cheaper ways of generating energy than we have now. As an example, there are currently multiple initiatives to capture clean, stranded energy, which is impractical to ship or transmit. Bitcoin mining can be used immediately where this energy is generated, removing pressure on existing power sources used for other applications. Search the internet for Bitcoin stranded energy mining to find numerous examples. I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin's incentive to use energy be the catalyst that finally pushes forward the actual development of fusion energy, space-based solar energy capture, and other exotic energy sources whose progress coincidentally stalled when fiat currency, also known as the petrodollar, replaced the gold standard. 
To see many examples of the impact that event had on the progress of our civilization, please take a few minutes to look at the website WTF happened in 1971.com for details. Such progress in energy production is good not only for Bitcoin mining, but also for the entirety of human civilization and the environment. Chapter 8 Why Bitcoin is the best way to save money. What does the expression save money mean to you? Do you think it means putting dollars in a savings account at a bank? Let's take a closer look at this two-word expression we don't often think too much about. The word save has two meanings. The first is to keep and store up. The second meaning is to keep safe and rescue. This second is the one I'm interested in today. And what about money? I'll offer a definition because the dictionary presumes it is physical coins or banknotes, and that's badly outdated even before you consider the existence of Bitcoin. Simply put, money is an instrument that people use to store and transfer value. Now imagine if the instrument that people used to store and transfer value was under attack or was dying. We would need to rescue this instrument. We would need to save this instrument. We would need to save money. So you see, when I talk about saving money nowadays, I don't mean putting dollars into a bank. I mean finding a new instrument humankind can rely on to store and transfer value. The reason a new instrument is needed is because the old one isn't working anymore. For at least 50 years, government-issued money has been losing its buying power by a process we all know as inflation. A can of soup used to cost 10 cents. It now costs a dollar. Countless examples are available. A house has gone up tenfold in price, too. Inflation happens because there is political pressure put on the people who can create money to produce lots of it, and they lack the discipline to resist that pressure. Today, that pressure has reached a boiling point where trillions of dollars are created overnight multiple times a year. This destroys savings held in the form of dollars in quote, savings accounts. Enter Bitcoin, saving money. Bitcoin is here to rescue the very idea of money from its unprincipled overproduction by the undisciplined and unreliable human caretakers of the monetary system. In Bitcoin, there is no inflation. There are and only ever will be 21 million coins, each divisible into 100 million parts called Satoshis. The coins will be released according to an unchangeable schedule over the next 100 plus years. They will be issued only to people who put in hard work to earn those Bitcoins over that time frame. No political event can change the supply of Bitcoins. This guaranteed scarcity combined with the requirement to do work for the new issuances of Bitcoin reintroduces integrity into the monetary system. But it does so only for the monetary instrument which has those characteristics, and that is Bitcoins and their subunits, Satoshis. So Bitcoin is literally here to save money from destruction. And if you want to save your money from destruction, you should convert it to Bitcoin. All right, before we get into chapter nine, why nobody can stop Bitcoin, let's take a minute for our sponsor, and let's hit our newest sponsor today, the Fold app. Literally, earn sats back on everything with the Fold debit card. I bought coffee this morning, and I got 1.8% back in sats. I bought gas yesterday and got 1.2% back. I am about to buy a $200 gift card for Amazon, and I'm going to get 6% back. Because for the full card, I get 5%. I got a daily spin, which got me an extra 1%. And then I'm going to get a spin on the magic wheel of sats back, which I don't even know what it's going to be yet because it could be anything. It could be a free extra spin. It could be uh, uh, up to... Why nobody can stop Bitcoin. Just about every man-made thing can be stopped somehow. We can slam on a vehicle's brakes. 
or at least put an obstacle in its way. We can cut a machine's power. We can order an organization stopped by the courts or the armed forces if necessary. It seems like you can stop anything with some force that counters whatever keeps that thing going. So how could a thing like Bitcoin become unstoppable? Bitcoin employs two countermeasures to ever being stopped. Flawless replicas everywhere. Bitcoin's first defense from being stopped is that you can't actually locate it. It's hard, after all, to stop something that you can't find. A Bitcoin node is an instance of the Bitcoin program running on some computer. And each and every Bitcoin node is an exact replica of every other Bitcoin node, in every way that matters, at least. Each node contains all the programming necessary to run Bitcoin, along with all the information about who can spend every single bit of every Bitcoin. If someone wanted to stop Bitcoin, they'd have to stop each and every node, everywhere in the world, all at once, and keep them all stopped forever. However, Bitcoin isn't hard to run. It can operate on the simplest of computers available today. Bitcoin can also hide behind encrypted services so that nobody can see where it's running. It is impossible to find all the computers in the world running Bitcoin. If someone were hunting down Bitcoin in an attempt to shut it down, they might find some nodes, or maybe even a lot of them. But as long as Bitcoin is running somewhere on some computer, it is running for everyone and anyone that can reach that computer. And reaching a computer is pretty easy, considering the internet connects just about every computer in the world to every other one. Even if someone managed to stop every node, as soon as any one of them restarted, Bitcoin would resume where it left off. If, in fact, someone was hunting down the world's Bitcoin nodes, any of them could go into sleep mode when the hunter came near and thus become completely invisible until that hunter moved on to find other prey. The first thing it would do when it awoke would be turn itself into a precise replica of all the other nodes out there. There's tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of nodes running everywhere all over the world right now. There's no way to know exactly how many Bitcoin nodes are running. That makes it impossible to even know how hard a task it would be to try to stop Bitcoin. Flexible energy requirements. Most things require some minimal amount of energy to operate. Bitcoin doesn't. Yes, Bitcoin uses energy. It uses energy to ensure that no node can trick any other node into becoming different from any of the others. This energy use is what prevents any node from ever mistaking which is the true record to replicate. The true record is the one with the most energy used. But exactly how much energy Bitcoin needs depends only on how much energy is actually being used. If someone managed to cut the power to even all but one of the nodes, Eventually, the energy requirements of Bitcoin would diminish so that just the last little node's power would be all that was needed to keep the network ticking along just fine. So Bitcoin can't be starved of the energy it needs because it can operate on very little energy if that's all it can get. Unfindable plus unstarvable equals unstoppable. Put it all together and you get unstoppability. Since nobody can physically find all the necessary parts they'd need to shut down Bitcoin, and nobody can starve Bitcoin of the energy it needs, nobody can stop it. There are many reasons it's important that nobody can stop Bitcoin. One is that Bitcoin itself is extremely important. Even more importantly, you need Bitcoin to become all that you can be. Chapter 10 why and how Bitcoin uses energy. You've heard Bitcoin uses lots of energy. This is true. You may have heard it wastes energy or does something useless with it. That is false. Here's how Bitcoin uses energy and why it uses it. Why does Bitcoin use energy? Bitcoin uses energy to ensure that every copy of the record of who owns which Bitcoins is identical. Making actual copies of that record, known as the blockchain, 
uses hardly any energy at all. What does take energy is ensuring that nobody can erase any previous entries and that only one new set of entries can be added every 10 minutes on average. Let's consider an example. If you own some Bitcoin, someone had to send it to you. That transaction was recorded in the blockchain, which as I've said is the record of where Bitcoins are. If someone could go back and erase that record, then you wouldn't have that Bitcoin anymore. So the first part of the answer to the question, why does Bitcoin use energy, is to prevent anyone from erasing any of its records. How does Bitcoin use energy? Bitcoin needs to create a digital record that can't be changed. This is done by literally baking energy into each record so that erasing that record would require using more energy than all the energy which comes after the record is created. Let me simplify with an example. If I sent you some Bitcoin a year ago, the only way to erase that transaction, thus taking your money away, would be to try to rewrite Bitcoin's history since then. That would require using more energy than Bitcoin used over the entire year since that transaction was first recorded. That would take so long that by the time it was done, there would likely be another year or more of records to try to catch up with. It would also be incredibly expensive because energy costs money. And it might even be physically impossible given how much energy that would require. It's simply too difficult a task to accomplish. So, Bitcoin uses energy to build an essentially uneditable record of all the Bitcoins in existence and who owns them. Side note, a fancy word for uneditable is immutable. Bitcoin is for anyone and everyone. Anyone in the world can make a copy of this record, keep it up to date, and ensure it is completely accurate and not tampered with. Bitcoin relies only on well-tested mathematical functions that let anyone prove with very little time and very little energy exactly how much energy went into creating each individual part, a block, of the entire record. Again, the block chain. This way, anyone can see for themselves that the record they hold is the true one. It also makes it hard to stop Bitcoin because tens of thousands of people all over the world operate it. Why do people put energy into Bitcoin? Bitcoins are very scarce. There will only ever be 21 million, but each can be divided into 100 million parts. People choose to use costly energy because it's how they get to own the newly created scarce Bitcoins. Simply put, Bitcoin pays people in Bitcoin to put energy into Bitcoin. That may sound a little circular, so let me expand it out. Bitcoin pays people with scarce money for them to do work that secures that money for the benefit of everyone who uses that scarce and secure money. That actually sounds like a very fair system. If you're concerned about the environmental externality of this, please read this article. Link included. Conclusion. Bitcoin uses energy to be the most secure money in history. In summary, because every watt of energy that Bitcoin consumes is used to prevent any altering of its records, Bitcoin is the most secure method of storing money that has ever existed. You can hopefully see that this energy is not wasted, but is put to good use, securing the scarcest, most valuable money humanity has ever seen. Now, chapter 11, I'm sorry for the change of voice. That was Tomer Strollite's book, and I just wanted to comment on this chapter 11. Um, so, Tomer is a Bitcoin maximalist. What does that mean? A Bitcoin maximalist is a person who says that only Bitcoin is the great, greatest crypto to, that will ever exist. It's like saying that only Christianity is the only true religion. It's like saying only Islam is the only true religion. It's like saying also only bench press is the only exercise you'll ever need. No, there are other forms of exercises that help you improve in other things. 
So this is where we disagree with Bitcoin maximalists. Uh, there are also other other cryptos that serve different functions, such as Ethereum. It's like electricity. Bitcoin is a great source of value. It's it's like gold or silver. It's beautiful and perfect. However, there are other cryptocurrencies that also are have other uses, such as gaming cryptos. Gaming cryptos help people exchange goods and services in gaming. Anywho, here we go. Let's skip to chapter number 12. Chapter 12. Why everything that should hurt Bitcoin only makes it stronger. Bitcoin keeps getting stronger despite the fact that it confronts challenges of increasing difficulty from ever stronger opponents, although they don't stay its opponents for long. Bitcoin loves being attacked. Bitcoin especially likes it when something tries to kill it, and it's also very fond of people trying to ban it or trying to replace it with something, quote, better. When it comes to attacks on Bitcoin, the question isn't what's going to kill Bitcoin. It's what's going to make Bitcoin bigger, stronger, better, and more valuable. Bitcoin thrives when attacked. Bitcoin was born with many capabilities that protect it against the kinds of attacks that would instantly damage or destroy any person, company, or country. Yes, Bitcoin could survive a nuclear attack. Bitcoin can also develop new defenses that it previously lacked. It can add or learn new capabilities because it is software, and it strongly incentivizes people who own Bitcoins to create and install these defenses. Bitcoin is the greatest gladiator the world has seen. All of Bitcoin's battles take place out in the open. Each time Bitcoin successfully fends off a new attack in the real world, the whole world gets to see that Bitcoin is invulnerable to yet one more thing. As a result, observers can all see that Bitcoin has proven itself to be stronger than was believed. Some of these witnesses then begin to use Bitcoin, or to use it more than they had previously. This makes Bitcoin more valuable. When Bitcoin becomes more valuable, that usually attracts new attackers, allowing this glorious process to begin anew. Even when it comes to the very people who are attacking Bitcoin or those cheering them on, Bitcoin does not prevent them from using it when the attack is over, nor even during the attack for that matter. Bitcoin welcomes all its enemies as equally as it does its allies. Bitcoin is always ready to make peace with everyone, even with those who fought against it. Bitcoin holds no grudges against anyone and will treat its enemies exactly as it treats everyone else. Bitcoin grows from being attacked. One of the most significant ways Bitcoin grows is by proving itself capable of adapting to and surviving attacks. Many corporations and institutions are beginning to store their wealth in Bitcoin precisely for this reason. They once expected Bitcoin to die. In fact, many of them expected it to die because they tried to kill it by preventing their customers from accessing it. They now see that this strategy only hurts themselves, not Bitcoin. So now they are coming around, and in doing so, they are making Bitcoin more valuable and more widely adopted. The same is true of people who developed and invested in competitors to Bitcoin, expecting to kill it by replacing it. They couldn't match Bitcoin's unique features, but Bitcoin could patch into itself any improvements they may actually have had. Not every attack is easily defeated. Bitcoin has been through some very frightening and drawn out battles. The most severe of these, in my opinion, was when powerful people within Bitcoin's ecosystem tried to betray it. But even in that worst case example, Bitcoin dealt a lesson to all involved, enemy and ally alike, that it could resist such an attack. As such, it has demonstrated to all those stakeholders that it is pointless to mount such an attack ever again. Attack Bitcoin, please. This chapter is not meant to discourage anyone from attacking Bitcoin if they have some clever attack planned. Instead, it asks that they please do attack it and give it their very best shot. It's for the good 
of Bitcoin. Chapter 13 Why Bitcoin is the Path to Economic Stability Some people are warned off of Bitcoin because of allegations of volatility. These allegations are misplaced. Bitcoin is actually extremely stable and in the long term will provide the world with greater economic stability precisely because of its predictable, reliable, and transparent guarantees. Bitcoin is extremely volatile, say the journalists, economists, and bankers. Is it though? If you were on a boat that was being tossed about by rough seas and were looking out at a lighthouse on the shore, that lighthouse's position would appear extremely volatile. Here's why Bitcoin is like that lighthouse. Bitcoin is profoundly stable. Everything about Bitcoin's operation is actually perfectly stable. The supply of coins is issued precisely in the quantity and exactly according to the schedule that was set out on its launch. Bitcoin remains fully operational with not a single second of downtime in the last eight years and only two downtime events in its entire existence. Every critical aspect of Bitcoin, like its decentralization, remains in place and only gets stronger over time. No matter what the world has thrown at it, Bitcoin has kept all its promises. 1. It has prevented Bitcoins from ever being misspent or respent. 2. It has issued a precisely predictable supply. 3. It has allowed owners to spend coins without restriction. 4. It has allowed anyone in the world to use Bitcoin. 5. It has allowed anyone in the world with a basic computer to verify all of these facts for themselves without having to trust anybody else. There have been no exceptions. How could anyone call this volatile? Bitcoin's adoption is a mass migration towards its stability. When critics call Bitcoin volatile, it is not meant to be a compliment. They are implying that stability is preferable to volatility. This much is correct. They are just mistaken about what stability is. Bitcoin's incredible stability and reliability, as described above, is precisely what is attracting such large and growing numbers of people, corporations, institutions, and governments to adopt it in ever greater degrees. As Bitcoin's adoption increases, its value, as measured in dollars, rises profoundly, albeit with wild short-term fluctuations as markets try to figure out just how valuable it is becoming. What's volatile is national currencies. The worst of the national currencies around us are in a state of collapse. Venezuela's Bolivar has lost 99% of its value against the U.S. dollar in just a year at the time of this writing. However, even the British pound has experienced 17% volatility in ups and downs relative to the U.S. dollar in the same one-year period. If we hold national currencies up to the standard of stability described above, none even offer any of Bitcoin's promises. None offer any promises of predictability of supply, and many, including the dollar, have seen massive supply increases in recent times. None are entirely resistant from being seized by crooks or authorities. None offer their holders unrestricted permission to use them. Regulations exist that require owners to identify themselves and declare their uses for values above certain thresholds. None offer access to every citizen of the world. Many specifically embargo people from other nations from using them. And none can have their supply verified or audited independently. It's doubtful if even the authorities in charge actually know the supply that exists. Bitcoin is the path from volatility and opaqueness to predictability and transparency. In light of all of this, it is no surprise that Bitcoin is increasingly being chosen over national currencies. Bitcoin's steady and unbreakable assurances 
give the world a stable standard upon which its people can reliably trade with one another across any distance, in any value, and over any period of time. And this reliability is exactly what will lead to greater global economic stability. Chapter 14. Why Bitcoin is the world's most inclusive institution. How was Bitcoin designed to make it resist human biases towards unfair discrimination? And what does this mean for the ultimate adoption and value of Bitcoin? Inclusivity is good, but hard. Eliminating discrimination in institutions seems like an unwinnable battle. We see case after case of powerful decision makers at institutions unfairly discriminating against other people. While we all know this is a problem, or at least not ideal, we don't know how to solve it. We speak out against it, protest, pass laws, and prosecute against discrimination. However, in the end, we know that human fallibility means we can't entirely get rid of discrimination in any institution that has humans in positions of power. Nobody is in charge of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a novel solution to the humans discriminate problem. The solution is that Bitcoin removes humans from the equation of who is permitted to use it. Bitcoin's unique construction means that nobody is in charge of any aspect of it. If the mathematical conditions to send Bitcoins from one place to another check out, the transaction clears. By having nobody in any role which could discriminate against anybody's use of it, Bitcoin avoids any human biases. Everybody can use Bitcoin. Since nobody is in charge of Bitcoin, nobody can exclude anybody else from using it. And voila, it follows that everyone can use Bitcoin. No other institution in the world is built to allow everybody to use it to the extent Bitcoin is. This makes it the world's most inclusive institution. You don't need an invitation. You don't need to live in any particular country. You don't need a home address. You don't need government issued photo identification. You can be any age, any race, any gender. You don't ever need to tell Bitcoin anything about yourself to use it. All you need is to run the software. In fact, you don't even need to do that. But you should. Money, to be valuable, must be widely used. Nobody is forced to use Bitcoin. Anyone can come and go freely. Everyone who uses Bitcoin voluntarily consents to using it. Its use is a personal choice. By being open to all people of the world, and its robots too, Bitcoin becomes more widely used with every passing day. Bitcoin may, in the not-too-distant future, become the most widely accepted money ever to exist. Why? The more widely used Bitcoin is, the more valuable it becomes. And as it becomes more valuable, Bitcoin can be used for more purposes. And that encourages even more people to choose to use it. This virtuous cycle repeats over and over in a positive feedback loop, driving up both the users of Bitcoin and its value. As there are no limits on who can use it, the sky's the limit for how many users and how much value Bitcoin ultimately obtains. It may not be long before the world's most inclusive institution also becomes its most participated in institution, and possibly even its most valuable one. If so, solving the inclusion problem will have turned out to be very valuable in more ways than one. Chapter 15. Why you should care about Bitcoin. Do you care about money? Do you care about civilization? You should probably care about Bitcoin then. Money has always accompanied civilization and changed alongside it. Since the dawn of civilization, money has been a part of it. 
As civilization advanced, the instrument people used for money changed with it. People once used seashells, then beads, then salt, and then metal coins as money. Today, the most common instrument is government-issued paper or digital records. We know this money as some unit of currency issued by some authority, like, for example, the U.S. dollar, or the Mexican peso, or the European euro. Each time the instrument that was money changed, you can imagine what happened to the people who had lots of the old instrument. They went from being very wealthy to having a bunch of seashells, or beads, or piles of salt, or antique coins, or stacks of worthless paper. The next change is happening right now. It isn't happening because of Bitcoin. It is happening because of what we currently use as money is losing its integrity, and people are in need of a substitute. In some cases, national currencies have already failed or are clearly in the process of doing so. But it is happening to Bitcoin. It is happening because one by one, more and more people are voluntarily choosing Bitcoin to be their preferred money. Some are choosing it because its rules are incorruptible. Others are choosing it because it keeps becoming more valuable. Many are choosing it because they see it as a path to long-term economic stability. There are many reasons people are choosing Bitcoin, but regardless of each reason, it is happening. You too have a choice. You can disregard what is happening. If you do this, you risk being left behind like those who held on to beads or seashells when those that ceased to be instruments people used for money. Alternatively, you can learn about what is happening and act accordingly. If you do this, you will be able to adapt along with our civilization and its money. You may find that this choice will make you care about money. I'm not talking about simply desiring to personally possess a lot of money. I'm talking about caring about money's integrity because it is such an essential part of a functioning, healthy, vibrant, and robust civilization. As this happens, you will likely conclude that Bitcoin is the instrument most finely tuned to supporting such a civilization. And this will lead you to care about Bitcoin, and quite possibly even to care for it. Chapter 16. Why Bitcoin is so much more than money. Don't just think of Bitcoin as a new type of money. Think of the implications of a money that doesn't have borders or institutions limiting it. Cars turned out to be so much more than just another way to get around. Automobiles didn't simply replace the horse and buggy. Rather, cars ushered in an age of massive mobility where billions of people could safely move around at previously unattainable speeds and at practically any time. This led to an explosion in the number of places that people could go to, because cars made it possible to create so many new places and have them thrive. Cars liberated people, and the result was profoundly transformational on the lives of everyone. They changed the world. However, in the early days of the automobile, it was not entirely clear that any of this was going to happen. Cars weren't yet faster than horses. They were vastly outnumbered by horses. Roads weren't designed for them. There were no highways, even. That all changed in time. Now it's Bitcoin's turn to change the world. The same phenomenon is afoot today with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a massive improvement over previous forms of money on every dimension that relates to money and finance. It is secure, scarce, and accessible to everyone in the world. It can be sent anywhere in the world. It lasts forever. It is predictable, auditable, verifiable, and divisible. It is simply profoundly superior. As was the case with the build-out of infrastructure for automobiles, including roads, highways, gas stations, auto manufacturers, and so on. 
Bitcoin's build-out will lead to a transformation of our society. Just as cars are everywhere now, Bitcoin will be everywhere soon. It will be able to be sent instantly and cheaply to anyone, anywhere in the world, enabling previously unimagined relationships and interactions between people, companies, and organizations. As this transformation happens, Bitcoin is liberating people from the limitations that previous forms of money imposed on us. It provides freedom from reliance on institutions to store and transfer money, from inflation that is destroying the value of savings and which forces overconsumption in the short term in ways that are unhealthy to people and the planet, from the high costs of sending and converting money across international borders, from limited banking hours, from delays in banking, from minimum transaction sizes, from spiraling personal and national debt, and from many more limitations today's money has. It eliminates the constraints of today's financial system. When Bitcoin achieves mass adoption, our civilization will have taken a leap forward that is just as dramatic as the comparison between the present day and the horse and buggy era. Like the automobile did, Bitcoin will make possible countless new successful ideas which were previously neither viable nor even imaginable. Don't limit your thinking of Bitcoin merely to it being a new type of money. Consider instead that it is an invention that will change the world. End of part one.